Welcome to my YouTube channel, guys. Um, some kind of new slash kind of old. I've had this YouTube channel for a few years now. Just haven't really done anything with it too much. But I do want to bring you guys some of my content, some more uh, real life in the shop shooting. Um, I'm going to try to get better as I go. Uh, there's still some things that I need to work on personally, but by me putting my work out there, it also helps me get better. Um, also, plus the feedback from other people. Um, and hopefully some of my tips and things will help you guys out along the way. And I kind of want to bring you guys some some life lessons. I want to bring you guys some uh, tutorials on you know how I adjust my clippers, trimmers, things like that. Um, we'll do a couple things with uh, finances, how I got busy, um, maybe some personal talks along that along those lines. Um, but other than that, man, let's get to the video. Uh, just give me your feedback. Let me know what you think. What's up, guys? It's D-Bless the Barber coming at you with a new video. Uh, here, I got one of my clients in the shop. Just a real quick video we did. Uh, he's got a curly top. He, we're about to do a low to mid skin fade on it. He wants to grow the top out a little bit more. So it will have some disconnection so we can get it to hang eventually. Uh, but for right now, we're going to try to try to blend it in as best as possible. So first off, I go with my number two guard on my Andis Master Cordless, and we go ahead and debulk. Um, it just makes it super easy for you to blend into, and it kind of gives you that stopping point so you don't take the fade too high. So here I take my Andis Cordless Master with the fade blade on it. I like to make my line of demarcation with that guard, with that, with that clipper, only because it makes it super easy to get that ball line out. Um, I kind of do that with wall as well. If I'm fading with wall, which I'll do a couple of videos of me fading with wall clippers as well to show that system. Um, here, my client he doesn't like to have his arches, um, so I'm going to take the line just to that peak just that line just that point right above his eyebrow i like to take that up take that guideline up to up to that point here we'll take the coreless t outliner and we'll remove some of that bulk that's left over from me putting that first guideline in Next, we'll then take the close shaver and clean up underneath that first guideline, uh, flicking out close, close to where that guideline is, just so we don't leave any harsh lines going from the skin tight to the actual line of demarcation. Here, I'm just gonna blend his beard in. Uh, just super simple, I'm not really doing, not really talking about how I'm cutting his beard or how I'm doing anything in the process. Uh, it's just kind of part of the the motion and part in the, in the swing of things. Uh, it just makes it super easy just to kind of fade that down.
So here I'll take my one guard open. And then what I like to do sometimes, I like to fade down. Uh, sometimes it makes it easier to control the fade. And on, on some people's type of head, it, it changes from client to client for me. Uh, I try not to keep everything the same, but generally my process uh, stays very similar to each other. It just depends on what type of fade I'm doing. If I'm got to keep it in close, in closer increments compared to if I got to stretch the fade out, it just it, it varies. So here I take my no guard open on the tapered blade master uh, that I have. I like to just go up maybe half half an inch, three quarters of an inch, um, just to kind of keep the increment just a little bit small. Um, then what I like to do is I like to go from it being open to it being a half. Then I'll go ahead and close it. Um, and I'll fade down in that and then I'll kind of play with the lever kind of flick flick, you know on that flick that line out um, kind of try to Detail it a little bit as I go um, So this way there's not much to do as you know at the end of the haircut As you can see, the haircut's already starting to come together um, just by flicking that no guard open into that one close that I have. Here, yeah, I don't even know what I was doing. I was like, trying to get the camera readjusted on top of figuring out where I needed to pick at the haircut at. I don't know, I'm always doing something. Mind you, this is a haircut that I'm doing in the middle of the day. I've, I just got this Sony a7 III camera um, with the 50 mil on it. So I'm trying to like get a process and a routine down for how I take these videos and how to, you know, try to make them better as I go. I don't, I don't want to keep putting out, you know, crap quality out there. I definitely want to put out high quality and stuff that's going to be informational for you guys. So here I'll take that 1 16th guard, like I said, and then I'll go in and just kind of detail just a little bit, uh, just knock out some of that, some of those dark spots. Um, I'll use full blade. I'll use corner of the blade. I'll use half the blade. So um, it just varies on depending on what I'm doing. I'll even then go in, go back in with that one guard, open, close in the middle, and it's just like the detail as I go. This way, it's less I have to do on the back end. Here I go in with my number three guard, uh, just to kind of grab majority of the bulk at the top at the ridge area. Um, this way, I could see what the haircut's kind of gonna look like. Um, I'm trying to keep it close because I don't want to go too high because if I go too high um, when he starts to grow his hair out it's not going to hang over like I want it to.
Here, I'll go back in with my two guard. Uh, just kind of clean up underneath that three. This way, I could, now you can start seeing the fade kind of really come together. Um, still a couple spots that need to get detail, a couple dark areas, and, and we'll get to that. Here, I'll go back in with that one guard open, just using the corner of the blade to kind of knock out some of those darker areas. take my texturizing shears to go in deeper into the fade and I like to debulk a lot I mean especially with his hair being curly um, it tends to look like that and plus he had a hat on when he came in so I definitely want to make sure that I grab all the dark spots that he had in his hair um, especially in the spots that it was laying down really flat I thought I saw like a dark spot, but then like looking at it now, it doesn't really look like it was a dark spot, but still wanted to get to it just in case it didn't show up in post-production. Here we're just going back in and just touching up little areas here, here and there, just to make sure that, you know, I got everything that necessary. His head has a few lumps in it, and he'll probably get on me for mentioning it in the video, but oh well, he got lumpy head, that's what it is. Here I'm just using the, the cordless master open. his corners as well as the back of the beard Here I'm using some of that enhanced hold spray to spray it down just to hold that hair down as well um, while I'm cutting it. For some reason I feel like with cordless, with the detail, with the, oh my gosh, with the, the cordless T outline, I feel like the blades, they push, they push the hair sometimes from the vibration.
here i'm gonna go ahead and raise it raise it this side for you guys um not much to explain here i like to use the urban barber company razor i feel like it's what has great weight to it uh, i'm gonna you know raise it a beard so i can kind of see what the the final product will look like I seen a small area that might need some debulking, so I went back a little bit just to grab those small pieces. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fast forward the next side so you guys can see what's see how we can match this up, make it look good. Thank you. 
My man's probably got one of the worst hairlines I've ever had to deal with. I promise you. Alright guys, uh, that's the end of the video. Post-production, I'm looking at it and I like some things, I don't like some things. There's things I need to get better at. I definitely want to get more of a routine as far as trying to explain things a little bit better to you guys. Mind you, this is my first, my first real YouTube kind of tutorial, if you want to call it that. Um, I hope that you like it. Give me your feedback. I understand that it's not perfect. Um, and I know that I will get better at it and then I probably will have my son screaming in the background and doing some crazy things I don't know if, if he's if you can see him in there. He's just kind of playing around back here, but uh, he was definitely in my audios at some points of the video, but um, It will get better. Um, I appreciate appreciate you guys for watching and hopefully I can provide you with more content in the future